We're going to give them a one-year warning. And if the drugs don't stop or largely stop, we're going to put tariffs on Mexico and products, in particular cars. The whole ball game is cars. It's the big ball game. And if that doesn't stop the drugs, we close the border. Okay, there's the president uh, yesterday being very clear. We're going to close the border in a year. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is here. Uh, he, he said, unless they stop the flow of drugs and migrants in a year, we're going to close the border maybe, at, but we will start slapping tariffs. So it sounds like the president is giving them a little breathing room rather than closing it tomorrow. Yeah, Steve, I, I think that's right. Uh, but make no mistake, Congress shouldn't have any breathing room. We've got to change these laws. This is a, a, a real crisis at the border. Uh, not only the people, the tragic stories that you hear about folks coming across, the risks that security it presents. I think about this as the Secretary of State every day. Uh, the drugs that are coming across the border, fentanyl, opioids, other substances moving, uh, is a serious issue. President Trump is using every tool in his toolkit to try to stop this. I'm sure you're in communication with the administration down in Mexico. What are they saying? Are they saying they're going to work with the president? They're going to stop these, these migrants from crossing our border? They are. Uh, they're they saying are. they're going to do, do it. Do? Uh, so we need to see action. So it's one thing to talk about. It's one thing to say it. What we need to do is see not only that they have the will, which they have communicated as they do, uh, now we need to make sure they have the capacity. And so we've worked with them to help them for years and years. We've provided lots of resources, not only to Mexico, but to Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador as well. Uh, they need to get a handle on the situation in their countries. Uh, we're happy to help them if they need technical assistance to do that. But it is going to be about their decision, and they have to do it. And if not, the president is going to ensure that uh, we protect our nation. Uh, if we can pivot over to Venezuela, you guys made the bold <clears throat> move to say the standing government under Maduro should not stand, and you have Guaido, who says, I'll take over, and you look at him as the rightful leader of that country. And as it's about to fall, in come the Russians again, like they did in Syria, and they're propping up Maduro. Reports are that they're bringing even more troops into that country. With the Russians there, Maduro stays. How do you stop this game? Because we saw the script already, and it worked in Syria. How do you stop it from working in Venezuela? This is our neighborhood. This is going to be fundamentally different. President Trump's made very clear that we have an important national interest in ensuring that the Venezuelan people get the democracy that they deserve. This is, Brian, you know, a once rich nation. Uh, we're going to return them to that. And so I, I don't want to talk about the options that we are working our way through, but the president was clear. The, the Russians right. must leave, and the president has also been clear Maduro must go. We're working right. to deliver on each of those. Have you spoke to Lavrov, and it was there, is there a shot across the bow to him, your counterpart, in Russia? Because it's really these two guys making all these decisions. Yes. Can you let me know how that, how that conversation go? How would you describe it? Uh, direct. And, <laughs> and do, they, do they show any sign of budging? Because if their troops don't move, then Maduro stays, and then we end up in a standoff, and people suffer. I haven't seen any evidence that they've uh, started to move out. Indeed, uh, there's risk that it will get worse before it gets better, but we've made very right. clear that the cost will be high. Uh, we've done the same thing with the Cubans, who are also there, helping Maduro stay in power. Uh, we're working with the Chinese, who also have interest there. Uh, we've built out a coalition of now 50-plus countries that are working to make sure the Venezuelan people have right. the chance that they deserve. Uh, down in Central America, the, the Triangle countries, you mentioned them a moment ago, uh, El Salvador, uh, Honduras, Guatemala. The president cut off aid to those countries officially? Yes. Have you heard from them? Yes. And? Yes. I had to mention they uh, were direct. They're, 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 they, they, uh, they've made commitments. They make commitments to State Department and to DHS. We've seen them begin to marshal resources to try and take down the, the big piece of this, the caravans that are moving across. And we've seen them take real actions. I want to give like them what? credit for that. Uh, they begin to put police on the streets, run checkpoints, uh, put some security. Look, they have some limited capacity challenges, too. Controlling one's border is hard. We, we know that. But the first step is recognition that you have a problem and that American support is contingent on a change in so your behavior. So they're doing more now yes. than they did six months ago? Uh, six months, even as recently as two or three weeks ago. They're doing wow. more. But, but, Steve, there's still more that they can do. They, they have this responsibility to ensure their folks do not flee across their borders. Good. You got this award. It was the James W. Foley Legacy Foundation Award for freeing these hostages, and then they decided to revoke the, the uh, award. Is that bullying? How would you feel about that? 
So first, I want to say that President Trump has made an enormous priority getting hostages back. It was a blessing. I got to bring three, yeah. three folks back from North Korea. We brought back Pastor Brunson, uh, Danny Birch just a few weeks ago from the Middle East. Uh, the list is long. The accomplishments we've had there are enormous. We've been recognized by this organization for that good work. I was personally going to right. receive the award on behalf of the administration and the State Department. Uh, and but they'd what happened? They'd announced it, and then all of a sudden, I, I, I wasn't invited anymore. And it's uh, it's sad. I, I regret it because of the the work we've done. The, Why'd the, you get uninvited? The re, well, the return of hostages isn't partisan. It's not political. This right. is an American. This is an American activity. We've worked with Democrat members of Congress on this. This is not partisan. And yet, it sounds like some in the media uh, who were underwriting this event, sponsors for the event, said, "If Pompeo's there, we won't be." And I think that's why the uh, organization they ultimately took it all about away from you because they wanted to sell more tables. Uh, you know, <laughs> you'll, you'll have to talk to them about it. Well, we don't know. I, here's what I know: I was invited for the great work we've done. We continue to do great work. I had all of the hostage families out at the State Department on Tuesday of this week. It was quite. It was emotional. Uh, it was special. I wanted to know what was on President Trump's heart about getting these people back. Uh, and then uh, we had this happen. Well, it's really unfortunate. And the, the reason they do it, they do not think you've been strong enough against Saudi Arabia about the, the murder of Khashoggi. And in fact, uh, the House and Senate voted to stop supporting in any way we do the Saudis' war in Yemen. But when you do that, that might be fine, but you're actually giving Yemen to Iran. Do people know there's, you might not like Saudi, Saudi Arabia, but do you want to give Yemen to Iran? That's what happens. This has been the administration's point all along. The true threat there uh, in the region is the Islamic Republic of Iran. We don't want to do things that benefit them. Uh, I, I regret. I, I don't know why. Maybe it was because of they, they don't think we've done enough uh, with respect to Mr. Khashoggi. I actually think we've done uh, a great deal uh, and are prepared to do more. Uh, but make no mistake about it. Regardless, Diane Foley, this organization, she's a great lady. Her son yeah. was beheaded. Of course. Uh, we we love her dearly. And make no mistake, we will, regardless of the fact we were disinvited, we're going to keep bringing Americans Good. home. 70 years since NATO. And it's time to celebrate that anniversary. And we know that, uh, we know that uh, they were here addressing joint session of uh, 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 Congress. And the president said how much more money he's brought into the organization. But there's signs of fraying in the middle when Italy goes and ignores us and goes and does a deal with uh, China. When a lot of these Eastern European nations go to author authoritarian rule, that doesn't look good. And when you have Turkey decide, I want the Russian system instead of uh, F-35s from America, that's not good. Are you worried about the foundation of the world's longest alliance? I'm not worried about it at its core. But I am worried about this. Uh, it's collective defense. That means each of those countries has to contribute in a substantial way to the collective defense. And that's what we talked about uh, when they were all in Washington this week, to celebrate 70 amazing years of work. Uh, they, they need, the European countries need to do more. When we see countries like Turkey make a decision to buy an important, significant, not just, not just AK-47s, but, a, but a, a significant complex Russian system, uh, that doesn't work. And we're, we're doing everything we can to convince them that they ought not complete that transaction. And you think you're making progress with Italy, not getting them not to do this China deal, and making progress with Turkey not to do this Russian deal? Uh, I think we're making progress in each place, but at the end of the day, these countries will have to make their decisions, and then the United States will make ours. All right. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much thank for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Honor.